tchau. What the heck? What are you doing here? It's not the end time. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what's good about autumn in Norway? The answer is absolutely nothing. However, do you know what's good about autumn clothing? Absolutely everything. That's the answer. That's the short answer. That's the correct answer. For clarification, the only reason why I say there is nothing good about autumn in Norway is because, quite frankly, all that happens is a lot of rainy weather and a lot of slimy leaves. So 90% of the time, all you do is wear a raincoat and slip on slimy, ugly, disgusting brown leaves. So that's that. Although that is a very, very good practice for slipping on ice the other 90% of the year that we enjoy here in Norway. So, as you have probably guessed, this is going to be a very short video. I hope. <laughs> I'll try to make it short because all I'll be doing today ooh, Winston, is planning. It's planning a capsule wardrobe for autumn, which I'll probably be hiding underneath a raincoat anyway, but we are here to sew things and have fun. So, let's go. <laughs> let's get down. To business. Le plan. This is the plan. I was heavily inspired to make this video by uh, With Love Christina, if I remember her channel correctly. I, I, will, I will link the video that I really loved in the description of this video. And you can watch her video as well and be inspired. But what I decided is to build my whole capsule wardrobe on the basis of one dress, which is not going to be a dress. And if you want to know what I mean, what I'm talking about, what this whole thing is about, you'll have to watch the next video. I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. What I really loved in Christina's video especially is the blazer that she had was a vintage girl's dream come true. I don't think I have a pattern for this kind of blazer, but I really did love the style because it was cut off at the waist and kind of went like this, almost like a peplum, which gorgeous and I will be including the chemise that I do have right here it's a kind of a peasant blouse extended I'm so sorry for being scandalous into a dress <laughs> and this corset is a reversible corset that I did make in one of my first videos if you want to see that I will link to that as well I guess if I don't forget but what I will be making in this series of making a vintage autumn capsule wardrobe will be the dress that's not a dress in brown, hopefully. I did not quite give up on finding the perfect brown for the autumn wardrobe. And a brown blazer to match this, the, the dress, that is not a dress. I will be reusing, let me show you. Okay, let me show you everything that I'll be reusing from my springtime wardrobe. I make these pussy bow blouses for the spring wardrobe and I did not uh, I decided to save them for the autumn wardrobe because they, they are a little bit more muted in tone so that's a dark lilac and a dark green. I do have a 1950s blouse in white that is a little bit tight on me in my arms so we might have to remake it but I have the brown Marilla blouse that you've seen in one of the previous videos. I feel like making more of these because they're really really cute and very very comfortable and I have more white blouses with slightly puffy sleeves. By the way, I don't know if you can see it, but these buttons are made out of... they're covered with velvet. I feel like that's very winter, autumn appropriate. What I still wish to make is a black blouse or a brown blouse to kind of go with this, the dress that is not a dress and create kind of a harmonious <laughs> outfit. I do have the pedal pusher... pedal pusher... <laughs> Pants. The pee pee pants. I have the pee pee pants in black and a matching skirt that I really love. It matches the other side of the corset. So I might have to add it to the tally of the capsule wardrobe just because I have it and by some miracle it still fits me despite <clears throat> the obvious 
effect of me filling out into my feminine form but <laughs> oh and i also have the black cardigan that i did knit i used a fairy i keep calling it a fairy forest jacket it's a forest berry jacket by fabel knitwear uh, i did block it and i did add the buttons i did add the buttons to the to both of them now i didn't add any exciting buttons to the black cardigan because I kept forgetting to make the buttonholes, so the buttonholes are not in equal interv intervals. I don't know if I'll be able to put it on over the puffy sleeves, which is one minus, but let's give it a go. First of all, gorgeous design, nothing to say about that, but I don't quite understand the design of the neckline. It's kind of a boat neck neckline. So it's great, it looks lovely, but whatever it is that I have underneath, whether it's just a bra or something else, it's going to poke out from underneath the cardigan. I don't know if it's supposed to be doing that or not, but it's doing that on me. I, I did use the recommended yarn. And first of all, it gathers absolutely all hair. I have already cleaned it off yesterday and then put it in my cupboard and this is how I take it out. So I just assume that the cut hair will just be a permanent feature of the cardigan and the recommended yarn is kind of quite very much very itchy. So that's that. Other than that, do let me know how does that look? Do you like it? So I have the cardigan, I have some skirts, one dark navy and one red. I will be adding a dark brown dress that is not a dress and I have few blouses and I'll be adding a black blouse or a brown blouse to fill out the wardrobe. Hopefully we should be done before the winter arrives. While I have you here, why don't we have a look at patterns? Maybe we can find something that would be appropriate, appropriate, appropriate for a blazer. Okay, let's give it a go. This it's not hairless at all. Oh, that was a worrisome sound. Oh, I have some really nice dresses that I, I would love to make. I still do wish to digitize all my patterns, but I'm not good at digitizing them myself, so I have to rely on professionals. And that's very really expensive. Oh, I think this is very sim similar to what Christina had. In her video. I have so many beautiful patterns, guys. I wish I had the money to digitize them all and share with you because, oh my goodness. So the few that I found that I really love, first of all, this guy, just because if I just extended a sleeve to make it a long sleeve, it would make such a lovely coat. But here are the three, no, sorry, the two patterns for blazers that I really really love. This on the first at the first look looks very similar to the one Christina had in her video because it has three buttons and that's sort of a shape but this one has an actual peplum so please let me know in the comments which one do you think I should make. We did have this as a runner-up for a blazer in our spring capsule wardrobe that I didn't get around to make but both of them are cute. And I also pulled out a pattern that I've been meaning and wanting to make for a really long time. It's a 1940s dress with peplum and I love, love, love peplum. It looks like it could make a really elegant dress. Oh no, that, that's just my ear. <laughs> that's it for today's video. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Bye-bye. And if... You haven't clicked that subscribe <laughs> subscribe button and you're not a member of our sewing gang. Um you should <laughs> join our sewing gang because uh, all we do is sew stuff and uh, try to have fun. So why not? You're allowed. Come on. Join us. <laughs> I sound like we're trying to promote a cult but in a milkmaid outfit. So it's okay. Uh, that was me saying click that subscribe button.